Now we've made our little Himalayan bear habitat and look at the, ru the running water. Look at that. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Now we've got these cuties in here. And look at that. That's Anya. Um, we should actually name these. Okay, first off, before we do anything else, and before we make our new habitat, which is what I was going to say we should do next, is we should just go through and name some of our animals. And I think we should start with our beautiful bears. So, oh, there's a herb scent marker just floating in the air. Let's whack that down there. That makes a lot more sense. I think that rhymed as well. Wow, Dr. Seuss would be so proud. Okay, let's name our animals. Our female bear is going to be called Peanut, which I just think is really cute. And our male bear is going to be called Badger, which is a really cool name, actually. I really like that. Look at him. He's such a big boy. God, he's so scary, but awesome at the same time. <laughs> like cute and scary at the same time. It's a, it's a cool combo. Then for our lemurs, this black and white rough lemur is going to be called Pepper. Then this red rough lemur is going to be Taco. This ring-tailed lemur is going to be called Ring, which is fairly on the nose. Then I think this adorable little baby red rough lemur should be Mort. And this other adorable male baby could be Maurice. So we're continuing our Madagascar theme. We've got King Julian, Mort and Maurice all in the same habitat. <laughs> and then a great suggestion for this black and white rough lemur we got here, who's having the time of their life, is Zambumafu, which is from a TV show which used to teach uh, kids about animals and stuff, which is really cute. They used to have a, a lima mascot, which is Zambumafu. Then in here, we've got a very sleepy lima. It's going to be Dwarl. I hope I pronounced that right. And another female black and white rough lima is going to be Tito or Taito. And this red rough lima over here that's currently being groomed is going to be called Loaf. Although I think the other lemur is... Oh no, okay, there's a bit of clipping going on, that's a bit weird, but that's pretty cool that they, uh, they groom each other. Then this little lemur is going to be called Cinnamon, if I can spell it. Then over here, we're going to have Sheila. And we're going to have Rick. Oh, Rick's jumped away at a very alarming pace. Then this Lima over here is going to be Zoe, who's just come for a little bit of a, a chill out over in the covered area. This Red Ruff Lima, who's on the run, is going to be called Jinx, which is a really cool name. And this other ring-tailed Lima, who's asleep on the floor, is going to be called Scooter. And this ring-tailed Lima is going to be Jack. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Who's just having a wander into the quiet area. This ring-tailed Lima is going to be called Granola. Um, and she's just enjoying surveying the scene, noticing that there's people in here again. And this little rascal who's been running all over the shop, um, up and down the street, is going to be Banana. Which is really cute. Look at her go. Look at her little face. And this little ringtailed lemur over here is going to be called Rocket, who's not living up to his name currently, but he is going into the quiet area with Jack and King Julian. Little boys club over here. <laughs> On the other side of the zoo, we have our wild water buffalo. I don't think we ever got a male in here, did we? So perhaps we should have a look for some wild water buffalo and see if we can get a nice male. They were super expensive before though, and I think that's still the case. It seems like the females are really cheap, but the males uh, to actually get some breeding going are very expensive. So we're not long off. We might just need to check back in periodically to see if one dips down. Like this one's a lot cheaper, um, but these are good males. Like we don't need them to be this good to start off. So we'll, we'll see what comes on and uh, hopefully we can have a nice male in here too soon. We've also done some vet research. So our Oryx are doing really well. What have we unlocked for them? Oh my goodness, we've got loads. We've got food level three, right? We've got food enrichment and all sorts. So let's pop over to their habitat because we may have already got this one. Um, I think we've got a couple of things in here already. But if we filter by the Oryx and then have a look, I think we've got all of these. Oh, we may not have the melon feeder in here. Oh no, we do. We do. It's right there. Okay, I think we've got all of these apart from small barrel feeder. Oh, maybe we've not got a small barrel feeder actually in the habitat. Um, I'm going to put another one in anyway, even if we do. Let's put one here. 
and then they've got another way to uh to get the get their food in a fun way i think some of them are pregnant aren't they yes ra ra's expecting offspring which is great that's brilliant and we've already had one baby so we're all good on that front we've got some vandalized uh stuff over here security cameras aren't working keep an eye on them please thank you ladies and gents or who is in charge of our security? It's just one person, actually. Um, I shouldn't say ladies and gents. It's Lena, G Lena Gillis, though we need to rename our staff as well. <laughs> so perhaps later in the episode, I'll rename all the staff. Oh no. One of our Rosie is about to, oh no. Oh, oh, okay. That wasn't quite the send off that I wanted to give her. Um, Rosie has just died. We really need to get a memorial going so that we can capture these animals in uh, their names on the memorials when they go. Um, haven't actually set that up. Perhaps that's something for the next episode. We'll do that in the next one. Um, I just need to request these solar panels to be fixed. Yep, all good. Poor Rosie though. How many are in here now then? So we've got Felipe. Oh, here we go. Well, there were so many names from all of you. Um, I genuinely couldn't believe how many names you gave me for the for Felipe. And whilst I loved all of them, obviously we can only pick one. And I think every male that comes in here, I'll use that list and pick my favorites from here. But one of them that made me laugh based on the nature of the zoo as well is to keep it be Felipe, but have frisky Felipe <laughs> because he needs to get frisky. Otherwise, we're not going to have more otters. So I'm going to leave him to do that. Uh, I think the others are all named in here. I can't remember, though. Please do remind me if they're not and uh, we can come back in and rename them. Oh, we're about to lose Leo as well. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, this is just getting sad now. This is a death episode. OK. Oh, Leo, don't fall off. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, not all the way in. This is actually part of the problem. So I'm going to pause the game here. Um, oh, yeah, we're aware. We just watched him slide down the cliff. Um, part one of you pointed out in the comments, actually, that this should be pulled forward slightly more um, so that it doesn't let rainwater in, which is very true. So I am going to I'm going to unselect snow. I'm going to put on. What is this? I think it might be rock smooth. Yeah, and I'm going to pull this towards us and have it come out more. That's better. So now it's got a bit of a lip so the water doesn't just like flood in there completely. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we can we can pull this up a little bit, too. So it's not quite such a a, a hole that water will drain into. Um, just to check that they can all still get out. Uh, they can, but it could probably be a bit... Oh, yeah, they can definitely get in and out. So that's fine. They can go in there um, and rest, but the, when it rains, the, the rain this is going to catch all the water so that it doesn't uh, just flood the whole habitat. <laughs> um, poor Leo. We've got some vet research complete. We're doing really well on our wild water buffalo. I think we need to put some... Well, maybe we've got some more food enrichment for them. Let's have a quick check. Um, they're going to be right at the bottom, which is very easy to find. And have they got anything new? No, there's nothing new. Um, we've unlocked quite a lot of them at this point. But one thing we do need to do is improve everyone's food. So let's go on food. And I'm just going to check. So you can see the wild water buffalo. We've got food grade two now. I'm going to go on and just make sure that everyone's on the highest food they can be on. Okay, everyone is on the highest level of food. Leo's been taken out of the zoo, bless him. And I think it's probably time that we... Ooh, all right. We've got a male. We've got a male. That was probably... He's probably way too expensive, but we've got him. Sent him to quarantine. We've now got a finally a male for our wild water buffalo. Oh, we're about to have offspring. Oh my goodness, we've got so many penguins. How many penguins have we got in here now? Uh, wow, quite a few. Quite a few. Um, <laughs> I think the juvenile... I think it's just 32 males and 31 females, but that's still 63 penguins, and it's just telling us that like half of them are juveniles. But wow, okay. Um, you can probably come off contraception now. Indigo. I think you're trying to breed with one of your siblings, which is why you went on it. 
There's a lot in here though. And we've got some pregnant ones as well, which is great. I'm not probably not going to name the penguins anymore just because that would take so long and they're going to be cycled in and out so much because of how long they live. It's it's not really um it's not really worth it. But we do have some baby giraffes and I think this little this little buddy should be called Terry. <laughs> Look at him, Terry the giraffe. Okay, so back up on the Asian end of our zoo, we definitely need some facilities to go in. So we need some more staff facilities. I'm gonna filter the theme by conservation. We need a new keeper hut up this end. And I think what we're gonna do is have a little keeper area right here, um, or a little staff area right here. request the mechanic um that's not doing super well i think maybe they're just not getting maintained like maintained enough that could be the problem um but that could be due to our mechanics like being overworked but they don't seem to be no they're fairly efficient on their workload and we've got three which is quite a lot um i'm just gonna select all our staff and uh train them oh we can't that's good everyone's already trained that's good um we're about to have a baby penguin that's brilliant the next thing we want to do, now we've got a little bit, yeah, I've already got it. Um, now we've got a little bit of a, a staff area over here is just change our work zones so that our Asia entrance is using these buildings instead of the others, which is going to save them ages in walking times. So these two buildings are going to use those and we're going to have another habitat here, which is going to use them as well. We also need to add them to the zoo work zone because they're two new buildings. So now the vets and the mechanics can uh, can use them or can fix them if you know if there's something needs fixing oh and he's ready our main man is finally ready to come into the the buffalo habitat oh, i'm looking forward to seeing him i don't know if he's a lot bigger or not but you know the males are often quite a bit bigger in in those kind of species but we'll we'll have to see so next on the agenda is to get the animal for this episode which is going to be the Chinese pangolin. And thankfully we can buy some of these with cash. So I'm gonna get this female who's really good. And then this male who's also pretty good. And I don't know what age groups they live in. Oh, it's one to, oh, that's the wrong animal. Okay, Chinese pangolin. One to three, okay, that's interesting. If they're mixed up to three males, up to three females. Oh, okay, well, we're gonna have two. They're really shy, but guests can enter the habitat. So the fact that they're really shy Oh, they're promiscuous. That's why you can have three. Okay, interesting. Oh, no. Pause. Oh, okay. Um, what I was going to say was, because they're really shy, I'm not going to have guests go into the habitat because I don't really think that's fair on the animals. And we want them to be breeding. We want them to be happy. Um, the fact that we've got three Akapi in here now suggests that our two um, parents have... Re we've reached the maximum capacity for this habitat. And our two parents are still of a good age where I'm just going to release the daughter into the wild. The 39 credits, wow. Look at that, we, it's just brilliant as well. Conservation status is four as well, so it's an important one to release. And that will stop uh, Scotch from inbreeding. Yeah, sorry about that. You can just go on your hind legs on your own. <laughs> okay, she's been traded out of the zoo. I don't think we have anyone else in our, other than these guys, which we now need to move to quarantine. I don't think we have anyone else in our kind of queue. Um, perhaps we should get a third pangolin as well if they can live in groups of three. Let's get another female. Because then we can kind of double our um, chances of breeding. If they're happy to... If they're if they're promiscuous, then there we go. That is what it is. They can, they're can. they happy to just uh, switch partners whenever they want. This is a really cool habitat as well as far as the layers. I'm going to keep all this in the... Uh, the, like the levels and everything. I'm going to keep that all in the habitat. So they only need grade two. It has to be climb proof and two meters. Two meters is surprising as well. I thought they'd be a one meter kind of animal. Now it's two meters high at 
every point in the habitat, which is going to look different across the habitat because some of them are on hills and some of them aren't, but um, that's the right height that we want. <laughs> and the area is way bigger than we need it to be. So that's brilliant. They can have a nice big habitat here and we can put in loads of glass along this side. Oh, in fact, let's just have it across the whole side here can be one way glass. So the guests can see in, but the animals can't see them. So they're not going to get us scared. And we should also make sure why, uh, right now while we think about it to put in in security, it's turn off conservation. We need to put in some do not disturb signs to remind people to be quiet and respectful of the animals. And we can check their coverage. If we go into security and crime, yeah, we can see that they're completely covering the area. So they're telling everyone to please close their mouths and don't scare our Chinese pangolins. <laughs> oh, the oryx are probably done. Um, I think we should uh, come off them now. We probably have others that we need to be researching. So let's stop that. And instead, uh, who does need some more research? Maybe we should research our, oh, we got our bears, but I think they're fine, honestly. I think we should do more for our exhibit animals and get those kind of maxed out. Same with the wild water buffalo. I think they're okay. Let's move them on to the golden poison frogs. And once we've maxed out these exhibit animals, we can make their habitats like perfect for them because everyone else is really happy with their habitats. And the exhibit animals are like, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay, but it's not, it's not anything special. Um, that's kind of their attitude about it. So... Um, we want to make sure that we're doing right by them. Oh, more that needs repairing. Um, if I do something wrong, do let me know. I feel like more of these need maintenance than normal, and it could just be that I've not set them to be maintained as often. So maybe I should set everyone that breaks, set it to be six months instead of a year, and then see if that helps. Um, but do let me know if I'm missing something obvious that I just can't see. <laughs> oh no, Gina! Gina's died. Oh my goodness. Oh, what a sad time. She's massive as well. She died at 21. Oh, poor Gina. Okay. Well, we'll call the vet. We're about to have inbreeding here. We don't want that. Let's keep Bambi on contraceptives. I'm conscious of Melman's age. How old do reticulated giraffes live? They live to be... 25 so he's kind of we're at the point where i'm going to keep all of his children in the zoo and then when they're a little bit older he'll have passed away and we can get a new male in and they can breed with the children because we don't want to inbreed but yeah it's a bit of a shame i also think we did use these big enclosures here i think maybe we just grab one of these big shelters and we whack one in this habitat here because it would just save us loads of space and it avoids all of the separate shelters we put in. So I think I'm going to do that. but the, the tapers can probably go through here <laughs> and then the others can access through the sides. Um, I just think that's a little bit better. So we're gonna keep that as it is there. Um, another massive problem, I should have stayed paused, was that our hippos are fighting, which I think means that we might have two males in here. Uh, we've got Gloria, we've got Motomoto, who's still the dominant male. And now we have a grown, we never named him, but baby pygmy hippo, who is now an adult pygmy hippo, who is hyper aggressive. So we're going to release this bad boy into the wild for 237 credits. Wow. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Release him. Perfect. That's done. Request the mechanic, change the maintenance to six months on all of these. Our pangolins have passed quarantine, so I'm going to move all three of them into their habitat and hit play. And this habitat needs to be named Chinese pangolins as well. I believe that pangolins are critically endangered as well. So it'd be an important one for us to get. Yeah, they are. So it's an important one for us to breed. There's only potentially 50,000 of them in the world, which isn't as many as it sounds. <laughs> um, and it's difficult to reproduce in captivity. So 
We need to make sure we um, we do a good job here. I think once we get those in, we can start adding whatever stuff they, uh, whatever nature they like into the habitat and kind of shaping up. Ooh, we've had a new Oryx. New baby Oryx. Oh, look at him go. Oh, that's very cute. I think he should be called Pickle from one of your suggested names. <laughs> How old's April now? She's a young adult, but she is on contraceptives. I think it's probably because we're, ooh, we need to call the mechanic about this barrier. Let's just change this as well to be mechanic every six months. I think we maybe need some more mechanics because it says that they're fine, but they're, they're struggling to get everything done. Um, so Dominic is 10.5 years old. How long do they live? Let's have a look at that. They live up to 17. So he's actually, he's okay. He could breed a little bit more. In fact, I think to preserve the species, we should release April into the wild. And a bit later on, 42 credits as well. A bit later on, we can um, we can start preserving. Ooh, we've got a young adult male here as well that should probably go into the wild because I don't think you can have two. Yeah, one male and 10 females. So we'll release this male as well. Very productive uh, episodes. Now we've got Pickle, Killer Queen, Rara, and Dominic. Killer Queen is also on... Um, oh, she's expecting offspring. I was going to say, she's not on uh, contraceptives. So that's good. We could buy another Oryx, potentially, to keep this uh, going. Keep the, the baby train going. Oh, there's only two males available at the minute. Okay, we'll have a look in a bit and see if there are any more. Muffin died. Oh, poor Muffin. Oh, we'll call the vet. And not at your ideal temperature. Okay. Um, let's check that on the temperature. You should be okay. Um, I'm gonna just make sure that the whole area is. Okay, that's everywhere that they should be going, really. Oh, there's a bit of area here, actually, that they could be going into, too. Um, let's put one in here. And make sure that that's set to zero degrees as well. That should make it a lot colder everywhere. And inside here, I believe it's the right temperature. So that should be fine. We could add another one just in this entrance way. I've changed my tune on the coolers as well, because I was like, oh, I don't know if it's super, like, eco-friendly, but at the same time... They're just going to run off electricity, I'm assuming. That's that's how they do in our little universe anyway, right here on this YouTube channel. At which point, all our energy is made um, through solar panels. So it's pretty fine, actually. <laughs> we're, we're okay. Oh, our pangolins are here. Look at them. Wow. Look at them go. They're so weird. I do like them, though, I have to say. And we did have a specific name that someone wanted me to name one of our pangolins. So although we can't name one of our vets this, we'll name our first pangolin. Pepigen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Pepigen? I'm definitely not pronouncing it right. But I hope you're happy you have a pangolin in the zoo. So there you go. <laughs> I know you wanted one of the pangolins especially. And our other pangolins are going to be named Lapis and Jürgen. So there you go. It's three pangolins in the zoo. Oh, and another animal's died. Oh, Mocha. Oh, Penguin. She's about to die anyway. Oh, this is morbid waiting, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh. Oh. That was dramatic. Not as dramatic as the dogs sliding off of the, uh, <laughs> the cliff, but, you know, pretty dramatic nonetheless. Set more of these to six month repairs. Goodness, it's a surprise any of our machines actually work. <laughs> they always seem to be broken. Now, the next thing we need to do is put our pangolins into the work zone. So Asia entrance. We need to add this built add this habitat in. And we also need to add it into zoo. So now that our keepers and our vets can both reach the animals. And now we need to check that they have everything they need. I think the um, pangolins are one of the animals that use the underwater, the underground um, bedding. So the burrows, that's what they're called. So let's have a quick look. Chinese pangolin. Ah, oh, they're not. Oh, I was under the impression they were, but perhaps I'm wrong. 
because um, they would come up here under shelters. But we can put a nice little shelter in for them. They're only small, so I can't imagine they need a lot. These are really cute, these little ones. Oh, look at that. That's like a little trio for them. I'm going to put this around the back, whatever we do put in, because I don't want it to be too, um, too front and center because they're very shy. And I know that it's one way glass, but there's still noise here. And I want them to sleep comfortably. I'm going to have it on a slanted um, roof so that the rain comes off a little easier. Um, and I think I'll put this about here. And hopefully this is enough. Oh, I'm actually going to sink into the floor though. So it's accessible. <laughs> Hopefully this is enough. If I smooth out the terrain, will that help? There we go. That's a bit better. Um, have you got enough hard shelter? That's the main question. Yes, you do. Okay, that's fine. They've got loads of area as well. And can you escape? No, they can't escape. So we're doing we're doing everything right. <laughs> oh no, Zana's about to die of old age as well. Oh, this is turning very quickly into more of an animal death episode than an, an bringing new animals in episode. Oh, Zana. Oh, moment of moment of silence for Zana as well. I'm becoming quite cold blooded about my approach to their deaths. I do genuinely care. It's really sad to see them go. It's just so many of them at once. The next thing we need to do is make sure that their terrain is the correct type. So I'm going to pause the game, go on terrain and start painting. Okay, they're quite happy with this kind of muddy, sandy area, which is quite cute. Um, in that case, the next thing we do is we go to the plants and they like the tropical t and temperate Asian plants. And I love the uh, tropical Asian plants. So I'm quite excited about this. Let's put some plants in. Oh, let's put a water area in as well because they need somewhere to drink and uh, let's have some fun. Well, that's a good sized water area for them, I think. It's definitely within the uh, water cleanliness. And I don't think they need to actually swim. I don't think, no, they don't swim. So this is good for them to just drink from without it taking up loads of their habitat. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I love using these Japanese trees. We've got the, the cherry blossom and the Japanese maple tree. I'm not sure where the cherry blossom is from actually, but I thought it was Japanese too. But they're so beautiful, like they're so nice. And look at look at the coverage, they love it. Um, they're very happy. Um, there's slightly too much, too much short grass right now. So I'm just gonna slightly reduce that, put a little bit more soil in um, and see if that makes them a little bit happier over here, it'll be. Okay, they're happy with that. So I'll leave it there. Um, they do need some enrichment. They've got absolutely nothing right now. So let's go on enrichment. Oh, we've got loads. Okay, perfect. There's a forage box. I'm going to try and put the forage box at the front because it is something that we want them to come towards um, for, pe for people to see them. And in fact, I might just move this cherry blossom tree back very slightly so that we can put our forage box at the front here. Um, can we put it? Is it because of the animal? Can I move you over here, please, my friend? I think it might be because we had a pangolin there. No, maybe it's just the terrain. Okay. Um, I would I would like it somewhere along the front, just so that guests could have a view of it. But I think the terrain's a little bit unruly, so I might put it in kind of around here, which is still fairly central. Uh, move the tree back. And then we can have the cherry blossom come over here. And guests can still get quite a good view in there of 
the pangolins. Right, I can move that cherry tree back then. Uh, what, what else can we have? Let's have some, a herb scent marker, a small ball, why not? Have a colourful small ball as well. Have an ice ball. Have a sprinkler by the water on that side. Um, so they don't have to get hit by the sprinkler, but if they want to, they can. Have a little rubber duck in the water. Why not? And we I'm not going to put in a cardboard box because they've got everything else. And I think they're quite happy with that. Um, yeah, they are. They've got 100% happiness. Nutrition, they could have better meal quality, but that will come with research. Look at them. They're so, they're so funny looking. They're little claws. I love it. And we need another solar panel. Are you set to six months? You are. Okay, our mechanics are getting on that. I think maybe that we've increased their load. They might have reduced in efficiency. No, they're quite happy. They're quite happy. Well, we'll leave it. We'll leave it for this episode and uh, see how they do. Train everyone up. But yeah, I'm quite happy with this. I think we need a few more rocks. So I might just add some rocks now. Okay, I quite like having those like mossy rocks in there. I think they kind of add a bit of something to the water area. And then uh, we've just got a couple of little rock piles as well. Uh, we don't have anything on this side, but I might just throw in a couple of uh, temperate rocks just over here. Just literally a couple um, to kind of add something to this area. Um, rocks, the thing is rocks I feel add, a, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's realism, just because you forget that they're there if you don't put them in. Um, and then it feels like something's missing. But they add a certain like realism and just kind of an extra texture, I think, to the whole environment, which is really important if you uh, if you don't have it, you kind of you notice that you're missing it. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna put a few rocks over there. We got a little rock area here. In fact, I think this one's too big. I might just take that out and uh, move these two together and put in a small accompanying one, like one of these, just right here. Um, because it just it just adds to the extra levels you have in your habitat and uh, yeah, it gives a bit more bit, something a bit more interesting to look at There we go. Look at the pangolins. They're having a great time Having an absolute whale of a time. Look at them. Look at all the colors in their habitats Oh in their habitat. It's so cool to have all these colors in here. I think it really adds something to the to the whole uh, area Oh, Flora's died and Shakira has died. Oh, goodness. Quite a morbid episode, but we're going to move past it. They're all going to die in this episode, and we're going to move past it. Um, we've got some more research going on. Um, ooh, we've got damage barriers. Okay, well, we need... No, don't... That's not something to whoop about. Oh, the mechanics are already here. They're already on it. They're all good. They know what to do. I wonder how many lecheries we have left now. I think they're over here, aren't they? How many have we got? Oh, we've got a few. Oh wow, we've got quite a few males as well. These have just turned, they've just gotten a bit older, I think. Wow, okay, so we're gonna release the males into the wild because we don't need this many males, we only need one male. Uh, is this our, that's our main male. Don't wanna release him. That would be a very expensive mistake. This is why we need to name our male. Okay, we're gonna release this male into the wild. And then we've got this male here. We're now going to release. They've all just turned um, like young adults, so they're just ready to be released. And is that all of them? Yeah, then we've got quite a few females in here. Let's just rename our male while we're here though. Our new male should be Bramble, which is quite cool because he's got the horns that are like spiky. <laughs> so I think kind of works. And it's raining like anything now, isn't it? Poor little pangolins. I hope they've got. I hope they're happy with their little shelter. Oh, we didn't put any bedding in it. Need to make sure they got some bedding. Um, not that they particularly use it. It seems. There you go. Now you can come keep dry if you want. It's up to you guys. I won't force you to. <laughs> but uh, it looks like I would. <laughs> Uh, one thing we do need here is donation boxes and we also need some education to tell 
the, the guess what our animals actually are, what these pangolins are all about. So let's add a few uh, education balls. I think we missed this in the last habitat too. And I also wanted to add an animal talk point here so they can do a little, a little talk on them. Okay, so I put an education point in here as well. I'm not going to link any seating, but they are going to do a talk on the Chinese pangolin. And we also need to do exactly the same in our um, wild water buffalo habitat and for our um, bear habitat. So I'm just going to do all of those right now. There we go. Right, they are all connected up and we have two education points. So there's no educator assigned because we need to get a new one. So let's hire a new educator. And this is going to be an educator who's going to be assigned to the Africa middle. Oh, sorry, not the Africa middle, the Asia entrance work zone. And we're going to add all of these education points into here. So we've got three there. We need one over here as well. Um, we only need a couple of display boards for this actually. And these can be on the Himalayan brown bear and we just need one more solar panel. And then we just need a torque point. So let's go on here, add another torque point on here. And this is another torque point. And they can throw food in, which is perfect. Okay, so we need to add it into this work zone too, Asia entrance. And then we've got quite a few things just to add into zoo. So we're going to add in both of these into zoo and then we need to add in these two solar panels and all three of these oh not this uh all three of these into the zoo as well now we've got talks for both the tapers and the wild water buffalo because i thought that's it's cool to do talks on both of them when we can and they can just go here separately so we need to arrange the time though so this is going to start they're going to kick off the talks on the wild water buffalo in march then in April they can come to the tapers and then we'll have them come here We'll give them a month between they can come here in June and Then give them another month Which will be July maybe August as well, and then they can come here in September Or maybe yeah September maybe October we'll give them another month October and they can come do that talk as well now we could even put some seating in for this, for the Himalayan, Himalayan brown bear talk, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I think I might leave that for another episode um, because one last thing that I did really want to do in this episode, if I can find the entrance, <laughs> is I wanted to do some tours and I haven't done this yet, but I've seen that you can do it. So there's a tour point. So if you add these in around your zoo, I think you can arrange a talk uh, a tour that will go around and do all of these points. Okay, so as I understand it, the tours, we need to add these tour points onto our habitat. So I'm just gonna go around and add these tour point signs onto each of the habitats that we have. Okay, I've done all of those for the otters and the tapers and for our exhibits. And now, 
if we go into the tour manager, which you can do by clicking on one of them, you can probably open it a different way as well. Um, you can tell what type of talk it is as well. And this is just going to be an animal talk. We could have an intermission as well. I haven't even thought about that. But um, if you can assign them to your animal, um, which I didn't do. <laughs> so I'm going to go back through and assign them to the animals. And now you can click open tour manager. Then we can select the tour start, which is going to be on the giant otters, obviously. Got to kick it off there. And then we can select the points. So let's go. We've already had that one selected. Then we can select the tapers. We can select the, let's have them come through here. So Goliath, then the uh, iguanas, which I can't select through a building. And then they can go have a look at the axolotls, then have a look at the golden poison frog, and then finally lemons uh, poison frog. That's the tour. Oh, that's the tour end. Okay, let's get rid of that point. Confirm, and then the tour end is going to be there. In fact, yeah, no, they, we can leave them there. Then they can go off. I was going to say we could bring them right the way back, but there's no point. Let's let them explore at that point. The tour fee is going to be... Tour guests are willing to pay more than the standard two ticket price to attend guided tours. Let's just have... Ah, an extra fee. Okay, let's say it's an extra $3. That's super easy. And this is going to be um, light blue. And then we know the blue ones are that. And we can view the tour rating as well. Oh my goodness, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is dying of old age. Oh, our alpha male. That's so sad. Oh, bless him. Um, I realized as well, I think I set up the tour very slightly wrong. So this is a, this is a masterclass on how not to set up the tours <laughs> in that I put this tour point as the start where I, where I actually want to move this. Um, because I don't want them to meet here. They can probably, it'd probably be better if they met like over here. And then we add a new talk point in. Um, and that can kind of be the the intermission. Because this is quite an area. This is quite a crowded area. We can add another talk point in, tour point in there. And then open the tour manager, tour one. Select the tour start, it's still that. And then we just select the points. We can add this in and move it right to the top. Because this is where, yeah, okay. So I think this is right. Because this is where the educator meets the guests. So they can meet the guests over here. Um, in fact, we could uh, repurpose this whole area, delete this, and have this be the designated spot where they meet up. Um, we can have a few different tours going and they can all come over here and that's where they meet and then they go on their tours. So they start off over here and this is the first point. I need to check that the end zone is actually still a talk point as well. Because I think, no, that's just where it ends. Okay, so we need to move this as well. This, it might as well end here, so we can have it end um, outside. But it's just, uh, let's have it end there. But we need to add another talk point in as well. So let's add another talk point, another talk point uh, here. This can be an animal talk on the, on the frog, and we need to assign another point. Yeah, so it goes 10, 11 is second to last. And now eight is this one, isn't it? This is the tour end and this is second to last on it. Cool. Okay, so they're going to start at the very start over there. They're going to meet their tour guide over here. Then they're going to go to the otters. They're going to go to the tapers. They're going to go to the iguana, the, the goliath frogs, the iguanas, the axolotls, the golden poison frogs, finally the lemons poison frogs. And they're going to come outside here and they're going to end the tour just out here in this little space. That's really cool. I don't know whether we need to assign it to a work zone or not. We probably do. I'm gonna go on uh, a zoo work. Yeah, we do. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on zoo. Or maybe we should have two educators be assigned and one of them can do the talk and one of them do. Yeah, I'm gonna do it that way. So for the entrance, uh, and ex ah, see, here we go. We've got. We've got the entrance and then we've got the giant otters and birds tapers. So for this habitat, they're going to be on zoo and we're going to assign this educator to zoo and then we need a new educator. <laughs> right, there they are. So our new educator that's just been brought in is going to be on Asia entrance. We're about to have wild water buffalo babies. Oh my goodness. 
That's crazy. Where have they gone? I can't see anything in the rain. <laughs> Lost all concept of my habitats now. About to have wild water buffalo babies. <gasps> Is that them? No, that's the taper. Is that a taper baby? Oh my goodness, we've got taper baby. That's adorable. Are they in here? <gasps> this must be... This is our big male. Wow, okay. Look at this guy. He is huge. Wow. Can't believe we didn't actually have a look at him when he came in. It's just been so much going on in this episode. <laughs> that's that's very cool though. And oh, we've got a baby wild water buffalo. Just like his dad. Look at him. Oh, that's adorable. Well, I hope you guys liked this episode. If you did, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.